as far as I can remember, uh, he was my first influence. He was a teacher, he was a poet, he was a musician. As far uh, as later I remember, me, I remember my dad, my mom. I think we're having a technical problem and yeah. since is frozen. I mean, Conceição is frozen. Frozen, yeah. I don't know if she's maybe here. Do you have any other way of contacting her? Yes. Let me just... Uh, she may not be aware that she's frozen. Let me contact her, call her. She may need to reboot. Yeah, she, she she realized that, so she clicked out altogether. She's rebooting. Conceição. Oh, there she is. She's back. Hello. Conceição, you're muted. You're muted. Conceição, you are muted. We can... ah. Is everything all right now? Everything is beautiful. We can move on then. Yes. All right. I, I, as I was saying, I love uh, singing and singing. However, what had uh, uh, more impact on me was the... Yeah, I, I, the, the service, the net service mm -hmm. is, um, is failing, I think. Yeah, she's frozen. Yeah, she is. Oh, she's she's going. Uh, she's trying to do. I think it, it turned her off altogether. She'll notice it now. Mm -hmm. I was saying before. Feel free to ask your questions at the very end. Um, like the last ten minutes, it will save some time for you guys to ask your questions to the author. You can post on the chat, and um, hopefully. There she is back. She's muted again. Very sorry. We have problems here. Yes. yes. And um, he also used to tell fables and ask us to recount the fables in our own words. Mm -hmm. Having always been surrounded by books was also extremely important. Book I read and decisive for, uh, for my love uh, of reading was A Menina do Mar, Sofia de Melo Breiner and Dresden. And I still remember the beginning of the book. Eu sou a menina do mar, chamo-me a menina do mar e não tenho outro nome. Um dia uma gaivota trouxe-me até esta praia. I was fast the fictionalized uh, world. And along my life, uh, the influence, aesthetically speaking, and she also gave me the privilege of being a good um, I was very young then. She scrutinized my poet my poems and uh, discussed with me and uh, gave me advice and, and I will be eternally grateful. 
uh, but the decisive mentor and uh, I will say literary mentor and uh, may even say um, a spiritual mother was Alba Espírito Santo, a freedom fighter, freedom fighter, crowned the doyen of the literature and of and the mother of the nation. First of all, all she took as a mission the task of uh, introducing the poets of the Portuguese speaking African countries, the founding fathers and mothers. Of course, first Sotomian poets, Francisco José Tenreiro, Manuela Margarido, Tomás Medeiros. From Mozambique, José Craveirinha and Noemia de Souza. From Angola, Agostinho Neto, Alba Lara, Viriato da Cruz, uh, António Jacinto, to, to name just some of them. From Cape Verde, Cursino Fortes, before Cursino Fortes, Jorge Barbosa, Ovidio Martins, um, and uh, she also introduced, introduced us, especially the voices of, to the voices of the Portuguese neorealism. I, I, I must say that um, this process, I, I was, my generation was not the only beneficiary of this process. She did so with at least four generations, including Professor, Professor Mata, uh, generation, I think, was also very close to her. Um, uh, I was speaking about the voice of Portuguese neorealism, and Soeiro Pereira Gomes' estate was read by all of us, one by one. Also, the poetry of Antonio Gideão, among others. From Brazil, Carlos Drummond de Andrade. MSZR and uh, the Negritude Movement, Langston Hughes and the uh, Harlem Renaissance Movement, I too am America, Pablo Neruda, the Turkish Nazim Hikmet. So to make this long story, which has been already long, a bit shorter, this my, was my first schools. Later at the King's College, I met Professor Elder Macedo, who, who, with whom I studied Camões, and uh, who had a great impact in the enlargement of my literary universe. And talking about Professor Elder Macedo, I cannot let aside the very good teacher I had as a child. Professor, teacher Maria Alves, uh, teacher Julieta Bondoso, teacher Luisa Trigueiros and Antonio Pinto Rodriguez. They helped to stimulate my imagination and creativity and boost my self-confidence. And for that, I will be always grateful. Well, maybe I inherited some gene from my father. I don't know, maybe. Uh, I do not uh, uh, dare to deny uh, that uh, being a poet is probably uh, a vocation. Uh, however, I think the experience, the opportunities to learn, to feed our imagination, the family circle, what we take from our personal experiences, good or bad, the books we read, and uh, by read books, traveling around the world without leaving our, our bedroom uh, is a very, very was, uh, and I think is very important. Um, I, my memory, 
the role played by memory, by memory is, was still being important, very important. I write uh, because I, it is my honest belief that I have something to say, something that might touch other people in different ways, but touch them. Uh, the weight of memory, memory from my childhood, the family, as, as, as I already said, the friends, the pets, memories related to experiences I have been through along my life, and particularly um, apart from those already I already referred to, uh, historical memory is very present in my poetry. Uh, in my poetry, the presence of ghosts is heavy. And some friends ask me, why? And my answer is, it is an inner intimation to a poet whose country was born out of slavery. We went through the colonial process, traumas, uh, metamorphosis, and I still feel the effects. The country still feel the effects. I am trying through the poetic words to enlighten the darkness imposed along centuries on uncountable millions of people, to break the imposed silence to expose the indignity of their lives and deaths, to excavate and give them back their voices, their suffering, their faces, give them back the humanity denied to them. I would like if Professor Diolinda Dong will allow me to read a poem entitled Astonishment. Please. May I? Of course. No. Okay, please do. Astonishment. And in the sea, he was reclusive, the incarcerated worker of all the sea. He was just a silent wave, thief of ivory, inscrutable gods. No trumpet shielded the muteness of his doctrineless voice. He'll die with his name and his tongue. The West unfurled a front line of tombs that expands from exile to metamorphosis in new hymns, other abysses called islands. And neither star nor asteroid, no flame. From his own shadow was the shadow that loved him. When the infernal gears callously turned and the world emerged, his destiny and his home. Professor? Please call me Diolinda. <laughs> so, <clears throat> Diolinda, you. <coughs> nevertheless, me. I give you the word, I'm very sorry. That's okay. Um, thank you for that reading. Um, I would like us to start talking about a little bit about your first book, Utro da Casa or the um, uterus of the home. Um, I prefer home rather than the house because home is so much more center, so much more the, the center of our family and of our life. But 
it is rather common to see then attempts to rewrite history, to, to find ancestral roots in newly liberated countries. Um, that we see that over and over again. Actually, we saw it a little bit in Portugal this this after the 25th revolution, the, the 25th of April, where they all acted as though they were being independent, but it was really not that. Where there's this need to rewrite history. Um, to give it a, a, to change the heroes, to restructure it. Um, and we obviously can see that, particularly in your two first publications, O Outro da Casa and um, A Dolorosa Raiz do Nicondó. Uh, I am always wondered uh, and about the differences between Santomé, Santomé Príncipe, and uh, the other African ex-Portuguese colonies, being that in reality, São Tomé is the only one where a truly plantation style, social and economic, economic um, development came about. Um, the, the plantations uh, were the center of that society, ruled that society, and the needs of the plantation owners did as well. Um, to me, I would like to ask you, do you feel that difference? Do you feel that that impels your writing to be different because of it? Am I seeing things where they don't exist? Um, what impelled you in a way to, to have those two initial works that are so ancestral in base? I will go back. Thank you very much, Yulinda. No, no. I will. I will. I will go back and uh, uh, use again the expression inner uh, intimation, uh, convocation. Mm -hmm. uh, I felt the need. Uh, I already had. Uh, spoken about my mentors mm -hmm. and the, the, the lessons uh, got from them and the, the, uh, that mission of uh, uh, ingraining our minds in our, our spirits, who we were, where we came from, our past, uh, the traumas of the past, because the, 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 the plantation economy uh, was extremely uh, traumatic. And if you come to South Tome today, as I hope you and, uh, and um, Eduard will, uh, you will see, you will see the signs, uh, the Sanzalas, mm -hmm. Uh, the degradation and after the, independ the independence, uh, I must say the degradation increased, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, I felt the need to uh, dig up uh, through the poetic world, of course not uh, uh, pages of history, of mm -hmm. course, not intended to be political manifestos, but through the poetic words, dig, dig up the darkness, dig up the silences, dig up the the Construction also, the progressive construction of a society, the creolization of the society, uh, a society uh, which in the 15th, 16th century had already uh, um, uh, 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 the creole language uh, 
uh, we must say uh, uh, established. And that Creole language uh, was useful for the Africans, enslaved people brought from the continent to the island between them and also between them and the uh, colonizer, the Portuguese uh, coloni uh, colon col colonizers. Uh, you asked me if uh, uh, I felt, why I felt that need. I think I answered, but I would like to say that uh, in Sao Tome and Principe, the uh, enlightenment of history, the illumination of our past mm -hmm. is a very, very uh, deplorable uh, reality. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, I know I'm not an historian, I'm not a scholar, I'm a poet. Uh, poetry is my tool uh, with su subjectiveness, uh, 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 trying to touch emotionally the readers because uh, the poem is written and it's out of the poet. It's up to the readers, the scholars like you, to, um, to uh, make the interpretations. I'm not saying that the poet do not have his or own interpretation. What I'm saying is, we lost the control of the various interpretation we'll make. But that, I think your question was very assertive because the, the plantation economy, uh, before the plantation economy, no, first the plantation economy Utru da Casa, yes, which is defined as my Creole book. Uh, <laughs> while uh, the painful roots of the Baobab tree, at the Lord of Mikondo, is more expanded around Africa and uh, the conviviality I had with the uh, the uh, uh, African friends, uh, the the reading, the knowledge acquired. Um, uh, so yes, uh, the the outro da casa is uh, some sort of. Uh, um, Poetically telling, we went through this. Mm -hmm. And the war, the poetic war, can say uh, so in uh, so such a subtle, uh, also crude, also polysemic ways that I think it's. Um, it can be uh, a good way of uh, uh, going back, come back to the pre going back to the past, coming to the present, and foresee the future. Thank you. Um, I would like to change the subject just a little bit, and um, it is common among. Um, um, uh, post-colonial feminists of color to state that the that that women have um, been inflicted sort of a double otherness um, 
so it is clear to see that in your books, you do recover the efforts first established by Aldo Spiritu Santo um, of reconnecting us with this matriarchal and, uh, ancestry. Um, I would like to know from you if um, to you that um, the, the matriarchal strength comes uh, from what uh, from your from a clear desire or just from a spontaneous because it is culturally in, you're culturally engaging in ancestral traditions a little bit uh, you have been labeled as a feminist poet uh, uh, and I would like to try to understand um, what you think about that label basically. <laughs> I feel a bit uneasy about labels. <laughs> <laughs> and as you know, uh, Diolinda... That's why I posed the question. <laughs> as you know, several uh, scholars said different things about my poetry. Uh, uh, a scholar in France classified, defined my poetry as androgynous. Uh, uh, other as feminists, other as neo-negritudinists. And, uh, uh, but, uh, dialogue at this moment, I would like to say that um, uh, the title of the Utru da Casa mm -hmm. Conceição, we, we're having difficulty hearing you. I don't know if you need to refresh. Yeah, I think she's out. Um, yeah, she, she, she's, she's back in. Yeah, she's back. You're, you're silenced. You're muted. Perfect. Um, I want to believe at least. I don't want to be... Uh, 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 I don't want to put aside the other uh, uh, way of reading mm -hmm. my poetry and my books, but I think the title, O Utero da Casa, the uh, Home's Womb, um, already incorporates and evokes a body logic of woman and explore the question of simultaneously house an intimate as a, an intimate and as a collective place, a place of belonging, the archipelago. Yes. In some way, I want to believe that I tried to uh, bring together womanhood and citizenship. <laughs> citizenship as a form of belonging, as a way of belonging. And this sense of belonging is intertwined in terms of geography history, culture, aspirations, dreams, hope, resilience, resistance, and the faith, so to say, in, a, in a, a, a flat home for all. And nonetheless, 
there is a, 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 a something I would like to say that the home house, house home, for instance, uh, I don't know if I'm uh, getting away from the question, and I asked you, Linda, to please, please get away stop from the question me if she like. thinks I'm not. Can I? Yes, I said just get away from the, the question as much as you would like. Please feel free. Thank you very much. <laughs> For instance, uh, uh, I am a product, a result of uh, traditional culture, of our traditional values, and of a uh, more westernized value. How was that? How did that happen? Uh, at home, we could not, we, we were not allowed to speak the Creole language. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, father believed that it will jeopardize the assimilation of the Portuguese language and the, 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 the knowledge of the Portuguese language was a condition to uh, social, social uh, mobility. I, in most uh, middle-class South Korean families, this was what happened. But at the same time, we had grandmothers, we had aunties, old aunties, who spoke with us in Creole. We replied in Portuguese, talked to us in Creole. For instance, um, if you have noticed in my books, I use uh, Creole words. Mm -hmm. Almost all those Creole words uh, have a correspondence in the Portuguese language. Of course. It's deliberately that I do it. It's like a, an, again, an mm -hmm. inner uh, mm -hmm. Uh, a demonstration of affection. All was um, the voices of mother, mother always running the stairs up and down, and uh, cousin, old cousins who came from other places in Saturdays and Sundays to stay with us. And uh, uh, they told us uh, uh, stories of the past. Uh, I was not able to understand fully, but uh, was part of my childhood upbringing. And uh, uh, later on uh, was part uh, essential part of my poetry. Home. My vision and my aspiration. A friend of mine told me that Utru da Casa is a redundant title because <laughs> the home is the primordial house, the primordial home. And uh, I, I found it uh, interesting. She said, this is a redundancy, the, the uh, outro da casa. Uh, but I like that, uh, that uh, interpretation. I was, I was not, uh, uh, I was not. Uh, 
mild. Home. Our home, the former colony, the country who in 1975 uh, is marvelous. Enlarged islands in the for the reasons we all know again the plantation economy. Mm -hmm. uh, I can say that today in Sao Tome and Principe, in Sao Tome, more than 20% of the population descend from Cape Verdeans exactly. and speak Cape Verdean. Cape mm -hmm. Verdean Creole is the second Creole spoken in Sao Tome mm -hmm. after four, and the third language spoke uh, 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 spoken in Sao Tome. In Sao Tome, in principle, more than eighty percent descend from Cape Verdeans. So. Uh, the nation starts from being forocentric, the cold, uh, the cold filius da terra, sons of the land, son and uh, um, children of the land, and uh, uh, the society society was stratified. At the top, we had the uh, Portuguese. Uh, uh, we had the four in, as an intermediary uh, um, group. And at the very bottom, we had those enslaved people brought from Angola, from Mozambique, from Guinea-Bissau. Most of them were caught, captured in the cities, in the villages, because they were called undocumented. They were captured, put in the boat, in the, in the, the boats, in vessels, and brought to Sao Tome. Most of them never, never, never again knew nothing about their family, their friends, their lands. Mm -hmm. And in 1975, the liberation movement took power uh, after uh, the uh, Carnage Revolution in Portugal, mm -hmm. Mozambique, Angola, Guinea-Bissau became independent. So Sao Tome and Principe. And the, liberation, the government of the liberation movement was a, 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 a party. The state, the society, and the... Uh, Stad, Sociedad, in the nation, decided that constitutionally that everybody who was living in Sao Tome and Principe when we ascended to the independence could take the Sao Tome nationality. The transition process was turbulent. Uh, so most of the Portuguese left, but the Mozambican, the Angolans, the Cape Verdeans remained. And today we are, South Man Prince is a multicultural society. I believe that is is probably the country in, mm -hmm. in the world where people speak 
uh, more languages by square uh, by mi uh, uh, square millimeters. Yeah. We speak five languages. Portuguese into versions, so, so to say. The Portuguese we speak in Portugal, we call the Portuguese padrão, and the variety uh, the, of the Portuguese, South Korean Portuguese, which is spoken by the majority of the population. The Forum, Cape Verdean, in the stream south and in the stream north, Angular, and uh, in principle, Lungie. So, the house, I will read the poem, maybe it will give the idea of the aspiration uh, in the poem. Uh, the, the title is The House but other translations has as the title, as title, the home. Here I wanted my house built. It was to be tall, permanent, made of stone and light, of porous black basalt brought from Mishkita, the roof tiles made with mud from Reebok, red as the heart of the hibiscus flower. There will be a vast glass window to give it a certain public air. The backyard will be smooth and round, open to all paths. Upon the ruins of the dead city, I laid the plans of my house, standing proud against the sea, right here. I even dreamed of a dock, tall and grand as an altar. I can hear the murmur of boats from a blue veranda. In face after face, I trace the unfinished lines of my plans. Uh, the roundness, the plurality, the, 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 the this, this, this melt pot uh, uh, and, uh, and the, A sense of happiness, the idea of happiness, equality, social justice, um, and uh, uh, sisterhood and brotherhood, um, uh, the nation together, the nation unfinished, the nation in process, the nation with um, losses, the nation from the past, the project in the present, the reality in the present, the aspiration for the future, and uh, this progressive movement including all those people uh, who made Sao Tome their place, uh, Africans, continentals, because we are archipelagic Africans, uh, continentals, um, the, 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 nature, the, 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 the people from the islands, those who come and go and come back because they identify themselves with the islands. So uh, let's say that this home, uh, uh, simultaneously, uh, uh, 
and uh, collective is as I uh, would like to see uh, the, 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 the future. We are trying to build with lots of challenge, lots and lots of challenges. Uh, going back, stopping, progressing, but we are here. And uh, being here does not mean being confined here. The sea is uh, as the sea is a place uh, is marks a separation, but also can bring togetherness. We can see it in both ways. And um, um, the the this progress, this moving forward uh, in spite of all uh, these challenges, serious challenges, uh, we have hope. And uh, this house is uh, a poetic design of a house of hope, a house of um, a, a home of uh, uh, a self-confidence every day, every time, every minute, every second. Conceição, um we are getting close to our time. Um, none at least. But I, I would like to post. Already? One. Yes, I know. It's new. Can you believe it? All right. 45 minutes, but, right? Yes. But, yes. but I would yes. like to pose one last question, if I may. Um, and this has to do precisely with language. Um, there's two things in my One of them is that. Unknown caller. Sorry, somebody was trying to cut in, of course. So one has to do with these, the, what you just talked about, it's clear and evident in your last two works, um, the Quan Florida in Salambaj no Teto Pico, which is rich, impelling us to the future, as well as Afro insularity, uh, that is clear. Oh, yes, yes it, it that, so that trajectory that you are talking about from creating your essence to moving forward is, is well delineated in your work. And I congratulate you for that. But much has been said about the production of an, and rewriting of otherness. I personally have some problems with that because you are not writing as the other, you are writing as the self. It's the readers who are the others, wherever they are. So <laughs> I have some trouble with this notion of otherness, but you touched on the language and the variety of languages in Saint Tomé, which you're right, you, you guys probably have the, the, the biggest ratio per square inch uh, in, the, in the world. But um, it is, and to me, I know perfectly that Portuguese is your, um, taught language is the, is the language that you studied. It's your language. It's probably your language more than mine who has been lived in that language for 50 years. So, however, do you encounter any uh, shortcomings in um, utilizing the uh, language of, that expresses otherness to construct, to sort of out self-construct yourself and the nation, to, to do this, um, the self-birth of the of, of, of ancestry. 
So just briefly, I would like you to talk a little bit about the usage of language. I will try to be, uh, uh, to, 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 to answer quickly. Thank you. Uh, today, today, uh, the Portuguese language uh, is not anymore an European language, not only an European language. Exactly. Thank you. Europe is the place of birth of that language. The liberation struggles in our countries were made poetically because poetry was a powerful tool of liberation and the poetry, the poetic nation preceded the political nation. So the liberation, Agustin Neto, Antonio Jacinto, Alda Lara, Alda Espírito Santo, Francisco José Tenreiro, Manuela Margarido, the Cape Verdeans, Ovidio Martins, Cursino Fortes, we stole, we appropriated, and we, uh, today, the Portuguese language, I feel the Portuguese language as mine, as it is yours. And Probably I more. had a problem, <laughs> I had a problem. Until I was 15 or 16, it, Professor Innocencia can, Sensi can yes. confirm, we could not speak other language, but the Portuguese language. I started speaking Portuguese in Portugal, when I went to Portugal, in the bus, in groups, when we wanted to create a ring of intimacy, on, of privacy. Mm -hmm. In those moments, we spoke our Creole. But exactly. all our lives, until our late adolescence, the only language we spoke was Portuguese. So I sometimes I get a bit confused. Portuguese I, was my first language. Maternal languages, but at the same time, not, not speaking, but absorbing the Creole. So maybe there is a duality, but in terms of uh, in social interaction uh, uh, outside the family, uh, the Portuguese was dominant. So and you would agree with all the middle class in South America. So you would agree that what you have is a bilingual society. Multilingual. Right, but in, in your particular case, in your home. Ah, in my, in my particular case. You were, were raised uh, as a bilingual child, each of them being fully and concretely your languages. Yes, and I will add a, detail, a small detail. If I decide uh, to speak with you in the variety of the South Tomian Portuguese, we, it will be extremely difficult for you to understand. Well, so I, I may be I able have to, Portuguese, but uh, <laughs> in which I write, the Portuguese in which I write, the Portuguese in which I write, the four, or Lungo Santo Tome, and that, va that version, variety of Portuguese, which is spoken by the vast majority of the population. Uh, but uh, our literary language, our literary language is Portuguese as spoken in Portugal. Uh, and uh, thank you. Uh, uh, I this is our read, literary uh, language. I just wanted to, to, to get your opinion on that because that is something that is 
continuously brought up by literary critics. So I, I would like to have uh, to have that uh, that from from yourself. I do have a question that uh, somebody uh, sent us, and I think it would be a short answer. And it's about the title of the Upaiz uh, de Akendenge, and if it has any, what is what is the purpose? Where did the title come from? Why did you choose that title? Does it have any connection to the music? Uh, of Akendenge, et cetera. Pierre Akendenge is a great musician, a great composer, a great a poet and a philosopher from Gabon, the, the coastal country closest to us. And uh, in 1974-75, his mu music where what, what, what played an, a very important role in our sense of Pan-Africanism because Pierre Akendenge is an assumed Pan-Africanist and uh, he, 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 I love his music, he's a, he's a great reference for me. He has a, the particularity of um, Perceiving uh, uh, his Africanity uh, is in permanent dialogues with Americas, with Europe. Uh, you must have heard the 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 disc uh, Lambarina, uh, uh, in which they blend him, uh, uh, Pierre Akendenge, and Hugues de Courson, a French musician. They come together and mix uh, uh, Juan Sebastian Bach and rhythms and sounds of Africa, including including pygmies um, uh, chorus. Uh, so, uh, what to say? Upaiz Yakelenge for me is a synodoc. Um, Africa. Africa is in all my books. Uh, uh, the intention was uh, uh, create a, a nest, a poetic nest in a book uh, centered in Africa and uh, uh, as uh, for, for, for the title, the word country, of course, Africa is not a country. It's, uh, we can say a metaphor, uh, 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 but uh, the word country and one of the greatest representatives uh, uh, and uh, and uh, and um, uh, practitioners uh, as an artist of Pan Africanism, not only artistically, he's also a, a, a thinker and and he was a scholar as well. So he has several dimensions and. Uh, he was extremely important for us in South Omean principle. Well, with that and taking into account, we have passed our allotted time and we could talk for hours and hours and hours. I have a list that is unending. So perhaps we could um, do this some other time um, and continue this, this dialogue. I am so grateful for your uh, participation. I know it's not always easy to find the times in our crazy schedules. And we spend so much time in front of the screen. We're all going crazy with, with this entire uh, process. But I, I, we, I am eternally grateful to you, Conceição. Um, your poetry is a gift to all of us, um, to allowing us to understand and reconfigure you decentralizing the our thinking and making it wider and richer and for that all of us are eternally grateful 
I'm also grateful, thank you very much, my deepest and irrevocable gratitude. And I would like to quote Agostinho Net, I João Melo, I would like to quote Agostinho Net by saying what he once said. I believe it was Agostinho Cabral, Amilcar Cabral, and also President George, former President George Carlos Fonseca, they coincided in saying, that the best heritage legacy the Portuguese Portugal uh, gave its former colonies new African countries was the Portuguese language and the liberation struggles and the, the carnation carnage carnage carnation Carnation Revolução dos Escravos. Carnation Revolution. Carnation Revolution liberated the Portuguese language. Thank you. And now that you spoke that about uh, Emilcar Cabral, uh, I would like to point out to all of those who may be, who may not know of his writings, he is not just a poet, he is most likely, one, in my belief, one of the greatest minds of the political side of the Pan-African movement. And although they're hard to find, I strongly recommend um, a close readings of his writings. He was, he is absolutely um, fascinating. He's, he's wonderful, right up there with Fanon and all the classics. Thank you. And uh, I hope that my country, small as it is, a thousand square kilometers, will be able to preserve the Portuguese language. It's inevitable because it's the state language, it's the language of power. It's guaranteed, but also never marginalize uh, our Creole languages, our Exactly. Um, our ancestral languages, our our modern languages. And, exactly. Uh, in this in this process, I think uh, creativity and uh, uh, will, will flourish. Yes. And uh, <laughs> the, the language the language uh, uh, just to finish. Ngulani Baka Kosa, a Mozambican great writer, um, uh, said that uh, the incorporation of uh, words and lexicon of uh, uh, African languages, Creole language, Creole African language, and African language in the Portuguese. Uh, is a good thing, is a good thing. To enlarge the vocabulary, to, to, to make of all the, the communities in the Portuguese speaking spaces, um, uh, owners of the Portuguese language and owners of legitimate owners of the languages, uh, uh, modern tongue. Thank you. Uh, Inocencia has um, asked to, she has a comment and I would like to make it possible for us to hear from her. So Inocencia, could you please unmute yourself and, and uh, make your comment? I think in a sense I left feeling that I presume. Oh, I'm so sorry. I was. It would be so um, good for us to to mm -hmm. be able to hear from her. In any event, thank you so much uh, once again. And I some. hope next time I see you, um, we will be together somewhere, um, sipping on something nice and and able to um, to hug each other and read poetry <laughs> and um, just just really enjoy uh this was wonderful please please keep thank doing you very what much. you're doing you're please keep doing thank what you. you're doing
Thank you very much, Tio Linda. Thank you very much. No, to Thank you, Conceição. From Melo, Bernardo Amorim. Thank you, everyone, Tatiana. And uh, thank you very, very much for being with me. Thank and thank it you. was a great honor. Thank you very it much. Was all of the program. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Beijinhos. Thank you all.